I was not worried about Silent Hill 2 Remake until they put out a trailer specifically focusing on combat, which was not one of the core problems that the original had, so framing this remake like it was fixing the combat sent me a message that maybe Bloober Team didn't understand that. I mean, for a horror game to be scary, having bad combat is almost a requirement. You need to feel weak, that this terrifying situation has a chance of overwhelming you. No matter how scary a non-horror game makes a scary moment, it's never going to scare me because I'm some unkillable god who can fight any foe. You need to make combat feel like a test or punishment, not a reward. Resident Evil learned this lesson the hard way with 5 and 6, and the clunkier combat is why I prefer the original 4 over the remake, as the inability to move makes the original a far more gut-wrenching experience. So when Bloober Team positioned the remake as more combat-focused, my chest began to tighten. The original game's combat was terrible, and I loved it. Having these inhuman monsters stumble towards me as I clumsily took them down really sold me the desperation that was in James's every move, how he was just a normal guy in way over his head, how his lack of self-preservation made him attack with reckless abandon, and how desperate the game made him feel with each kill. But I left my expectations at the door when it came time to play, and like many of you, my jaw was on the floor at how well they had translated almost every aspect of the original into this stunning recreation. The one thing that I think is lost is the fixed camera. While it may have just been a technical limitation at the time, it ended up giving the player a far more detached sense from James, like there was a massive distance between the player and character because James was hiding something from them. Where Resident Evil only benefited from doing away with this outdated style, Silent Hill does lose something in the transition to third person, and I think that Bloober Team learned with the medium to lay the fixed camera to rest permanently. But what of the much-touted combat? Would it be faster and more intense like Resident Evil? Would we feel the hollowness we felt in the original when we slaughtered a monstrosity? Would we be desperately fighting for survival? Would James control like The Last of Us and have great mobility and refined shooting? No, no, yes, and no. I am proud to say that James still fights like a demented, pathetic shell of a man with nothing left to lose. His swings are still sporadic, and the excellent screams he emits while overexerting himself really sell the fact that he's long past his breaking point. If there's one part I thought they'd mess up more than the combat, it's the voice acting, but every actor is able to carry forward that detached, dreamlike trance from the original. Only this time it felt intentional, and when James let out a cry of desperation when he brings down his weapon on a corpse, it's the only time in the game he lets his inner emotion out. What makes the melee combat incredible to me is that it carries on the legacy of the original by having something unintentionally terrible that ends up enhancing the experience. Repulsive animations. James has no fluidity to his movements, and there's an extreme jankiness to his attacks that makes everything feel off-kilter. This rigidness in movement helps add to the numbness of James's emotional state. He's going off of instinct, not trying to desperately survive because he secretly doesn't want to. So having him be reckless and stilted with his swings makes it feel like he's giving the enemies a chance to kill him. The ranged combat is also quite finicky, though this time I'm sure it's intentional. The recoil on the guns is ludicrous. If you hold down the trigger, it'll be a miracle if more than two shots hit your target. This is actually quite clever, as it doesn't make it so the shooting is frustrating because you can't land a shot, but it punishes you for panicking and trying to pump an enemy full of lead. When an untrained person holds a gun, they'll never account for recoil, so the weapon will almost always fire back violently against them. Silent Hill 2 Remake accurately depicts this by making you wait almost a half second before you can take the next shot. This also allows enemies to inch closer to you as you wait for the crosshair to resettle. I really believe that Bloober Team struck a sweet spot between the excruciating combat of the original while still making it feel familiar to modern audiences. Though there is a significant thing they messed up with the combat that in hindsight makes perfect sense given that they dedicated an entire trailer to combat. There is way too much of it. Silent Hill 2 was a game that thrived off its subtlety and quiet reflective moments. When you're walking through the pitch black corridors after everything was already dead and you were left alone with your thoughts. It's these atmospheric moments that made Silent Hill 2 unique amongst its contemporaries. 
In the remake, despite being twice as long, these moments are few and far between, as enemies are almost constantly barraging you each time you explore a new area, you're always on edge because the radio is constantly hissing, except for the mannequins who jump scare you, which shouldn't even be possible with the radio, but oh well. This over-reliance on combat to keep the player engaged ends up detracting from the original's core essence of sullen reflectiveness, by constantly worrying the player about where the next enemy will spring from. But on a mechanical level, the combat is better than I ever could have expected. I'll be back in two days. In the meantime, here's a video about whether Silent Hill 2 is good at its unique attempt at supernatural horror.